Good everyone, I'm going to open up this three pole double throw foot switch just so we can see what's going on inside. I find opening up the switch is a good way um, to get a to get familiar with um, how the how the how the switch works mechanically on the inside. You may have seen the previous video I did on this one. Um, it's a it's a switching DC um, a switching DC jack, and um, uh, I cracked one open. We had a look at the mechanism inside that actually um, makes this DC jack. Uh, switch power from um, DC to battery um, and if you haven't seen that one uh, uh, hopefully the little eye thing will pop up here so you can you can go to that video to see how this works as well but in this one we're going to open up the three pole double throw so it's pretty simple to open up obviously you want to be careful if you're going to be using something like this um, you just got to pry these little uh, braces off the outside of the switch so the reason why I'm using this knife, even though it's not the most safest option, is because you need something thin to get down the side of those um, uh, those little clampy bits. Obviously, if you're going to do it the way that I just did, just be careful. That's a sharp knife. Um, but I find that I need something that's ultra thin on the edge to get underneath those um, uh, where those uh, uh, where where the little clamp bits have been um, squeezed down. So now the top will come off, and we can take a look at what's inside the switch. So first let's take a look at the top of the switch. You have the spring, um, which is uh, this bit here obviously, um, and you have the plunger. And this is the actuator, uh, with sort of, like a, uh, sort of like a piston sort of mechanism. If we take a look at the inside now, you can see there's this sort of, this rocker seesaw piece that, that um, rocks back and forwards when you push down the um, plunger. And on the bottom of that, there's these little pivot points all these pieces will make sense in a moment when we get these little contacts out. So these little contacts sit on the inside here and you can see that that, that middle contact is up higher than the two outside contacts. So this, so this little contact piece is actually rocking uh, back and forwards as you're pressing the button. Um, so if you could imagine the middle of that contact on the pivot point of the rocker switch, if I can get my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So you'd have it sort of like this, and it would be, as you push, it'll, it'll sort of slide back and forwards across that rocker switch, like that. Um, and so that makes contact with, on the inside, that middle, that row of taller middle um, contacts, which is the common. So, that, so there's always a contact with that, um, there, there's always a connection with that middle contact. And then it's just alternating between the two lower um, contacts on the outside. So... One other thing too I probably should mention as well is just thinking, um, just for people who aren't familiar with um, how switches work, um, the, a three pole double throw switch means um, you, have, you have three poles, that's why there's three sections to this. So it's basically like a single pole double throw switch, uh, three of those in a row. So that's this switch, this little miniature switch which you may have seen before, um, it's pretty common. Um, so basically this three pole double throw switch, it's basically like having three of these in a row um, and they all, they all switch at the same time. So from that explanation you've probably deduced that these middle contacts here, um, as I said before, are the common and then when you, when you hit the button it'll, the middle contact um, will make a connection with one of the outside contacts, all three switches at the same time. So just one thing to keep in mind when you're soldering on the, onto the contacts of the three pole double throw, just make sure that you don't apply too much heat to these, these, um, th these contacts on the outside because it can, if, you, if you keep the soldering iron connected and the, the heat starts to build up, um, this resin can melt. Some switches are poorly made and the resin will melt very quickly, um, but the, the, most of them are, are fairly decent. Um, but you still have to be careful. Even the even the good, even the well-made switches, um, this this resin can still melt if you leave it on for long enough. Um, so if you if you're soldering on, just do, do uh, apply your solder and then um, and then if you if you haven't got it quite where you want it, take it off and let it cool down again, and then reapply the solder, fix it, take it off. So just keep just keep going sort of back and forward. Don't just leave the soldering iron um, permanently attached to that contact. 
So as I said, that creates two problems. The first one is the resin can melt, um, and then this contact's gonna come loose, um, which will cause switching problems on the inside, because now that you've seen the inside, you can see it's a fairly accurate um, switch, and you ob obviously you don't want those little silver contacts on the inside moving around, because um, the switch might not work properly um, after that happens. Um, and the other thing too is that um, there's grease inside these switches, and the heat will just transfer through um, onto these little um, these little contact pieces as well, um, and uh, the grease will uh, will liquefy and and melt, um, and then you can end up with a switch that doesn't work properly. Sometimes that can translate to if you push the button um, on the switch. Uh, it's it'll pop or it can be scratchy or it doesn't actually um, the, the the switch doesn't doesn't transfer over the contacts don't transfer over properly it, it goes back and forwards does all sorts of random stuff so just be careful with um, when you apply that um, uh, when you apply the heat to those those lugs because um because those are some of the problems that it can cause so just to give you an idea of how this plunger works with the pin on the bottom um, and how it interacts with this rocker part of the switch. Um, when, the, when the rocker is tilted like this um, and the plunger comes down, it'll, it'll hit the side that's up the highest and then that will flip down. I'll see if I can do it with my finger like this. And now this side will be, will be up higher and then when you push the button down again, the pin will come down and it'll hit the other side. That's how it, that's how it, um, uh, it, it makes the rocker alternate between both sides of the contacts. It kind of glances off that middle that middle piece in the middle, um, and as it as it pushes it down, um, the other side will raise up, and then that one will be the next to be hit, and it just alternates back and forwards like that. And the spring here just holds the plunger in the right position, um, so that each time that pin comes down, it hits the um, rocker on the right side. So I hope you like a look inside that um, that three pole double throw switch. I find with switches, um, understanding the mechanical mechanism on the inside um, is a uh, good way to understand how that switch actually works. And then you can diagnose problems a little bit better as well. If you have a pedal that's not working, um, you can work out um, what the uh, what the actual problem is. Um, you know, a bit like I said with this DC jack. If you if you watch that video, if you haven't seen it yet, you can see um, inside how the how the mechanism works and then that can help when you have a fault diagnosing problem if um, you know uh, something that relates to this jack you might be able to work it out a little bit quicker um, but uh, yeah that's it for this video I hope you liked it found it um, useful and thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more cheers